From my sponsor ZBanks I have received another device for laser cutting or engraving. It is the Aufero Laser 2 from the company Ortur. In terms of price and features, this model is between the Laser Master 2 Pro and the Aufero Laser 1, both of which I have tested before. A second package contained various materials that the machine can process, some of which with example graphics already engraved. The Aufero Laser 2 also runs the open source firmware Gabel, so I used this test to continue writing on my software scripts for operating these devices. The Laser 2 ships largely preassembled. Only the frame has to be screwed... The X-axis has to be attached to the frame... And a few plugs have to be connected, the assembly is done quickly. The well known ESP32 microcontroller is on the main board of the Laser 2. The board is more or less identical to that of the Laser 1, only the A in the version number suggests that minor changes have been done. The three laser modules available from Orto that I presented in my video on the Laser 1 can also be ordered for the Laser 2. In my package, the LU2-4SF arrived, which has a laser power of 5.5W and an electric input power of around 16W. The focal length of the laser module is 30mm, the SF stands for Short Focus. The red protective cover on the bottom of the laser module is held in place with the help of four small magnets. For correct focusing, a 3mm gap must remain between the lower edge of the protection and the workpiece to be lasered, which is adjusted with the help of a plastic spacer. The laser module is moved along the X-axis guided by plastic rollers with ball bearings running in V-slots of 20x20mm extruded aluminum. The crossbar with the X-axis is moved along the Y-axis. There are two stepper motors on opposite sides of the Y-axis. With the Laser Master 2 Pro, the two timing belts are connected through a round rod and driven by just one stepper motor. The advantage of using two stepper motors is that the relatively heavy crossbeam of the X-axis can be moved faster. The disadvantage is that the two ends of the X-axis can be moved asynchronously when the stepper motors are switched off, causing the axis to get misaligned. That can't happen while the stepper motors are switched on during operation. So you have to make sure that the X-axis is aligned correctly before starting a job. The work area is 39x39cm and is therefore only 1cm smaller on both axes than with the Laser Master 2 Pro. A feature the Aufero Laser 2 doesn't have is limit switches for both axes. However, since the main board is more or less identical to that of the Laser 1, it should be possible to retrofit switches. Thanks to Gabel as firmware, adapting the software is no problem. As with the Laser 1, the Laser 2 is also controlled via an USB interface as well as the reset button and the on off button. An optionally available offline controller can be connected to a second interface, however there was none in my package. Power is supplied via a mains adapter with an output voltage of 24V at up to 2 Amps. Let's start a first job. Here the laser cuts parts for the housing of a Raspberry Pi out of 4mm poplar plywood. On top of some of the parts, graphics are engraved, which is done first. To transfer the data, I've connected an old Raspberry Pi Model B Plus to the USB interface. This not really powerful computing device is more than sufficient to calculate the machine data and then forward it to Gabel on the Laser 2. I've created the template with LibreOffice Draw and exported the drawings as scalable vector graphics. This SVG graphic is then converted into G-code commands by a Python script that runs on the Raspberry Pi and finally sent to Gabel. 
The Apache web server also runs on the Raspberry Pi so that data can be exchanged via a browser interface, shown here with my smartphone and the Laser One which also uses Garble as firmware. The Alfero Laser 2 with the Raspberry Pi attached to the frame can easily be carried around and so for example operated outdoors. Remember that a laser works by vaporizing, burning or charring material, processes that release vapors that are anything but beneficial to your health. In addition to protective goggles which must always be worn when working with lasers, adequate ventilation should be ensured when working with a laser cutter. It is best to place the device outdoors or at least directly in front of an open window. The Ofero Laser 2 is child's play to operate, but not a child's toy. Anyone who has to work indoors can operate the Ofero Laser 2 in the metal safety box with integrated ventilation offered by Autor, shown here with my Laser Master 2 Pro. Of course, the metal box has also a metal base plate because laser cutting can only be done on a fireproof surface without collateral damage. The laser has to cut completely through the material so the top of your workbench is inevitably affected as well. With the finished case for the Raspberry Pi you get an easy to transport laser cutter. 4mm plywood is also cut and engraved in the next job. This material thickness is easy to cut but also more or less the limit this laser module can handle in a single run. Glued together the components will form a case for a mechanical alarm clock, a gift for my supporters on Patreon. I have a couple of the mechanical clocks this project is based on in my cellar. So I could eventually start a small series production. The cuts done by the Laser 2 are precise, the assembly is really fun. You can have a look at the finished project on my website. What else can you do with the Alfero Laser 2? Well, everything that other laser engravers and cutters can do, I've shown more examples in previous videos. Here I have cut an adhesive film. If the laser power and cutting speed are set correctly, only the adhesive film is cut while the carrier material remains intact. The positive can be used directly... ...while the negative is used as a painting mask. The scalable vector graphics format is suitable for cutting and engraving, while bitmap graphics are only suitable for engraving. This type of file is processed line by line. A dot is burned by the laser onto the material at where there is a dark pixel in the graphics file. This works with all materials that can be chaired, such as wood, leather or synthetic leather. The sample pack also contained pieces of denim which I use here. It should be noted however that the fabric fibers are damaged during engraving. If the engraving is done with too high laser power the fabric will disintegrate. I have hereby warned you, so please don't blame me if you have destroyed your favorite trousers instead of engraving them. As with all machines, you have to do some test runs to find the correct parameters for your laser engraver. The fabric can be cut with higher laser power, you can at least make a cool looking patch for your accidentally perforated favorite trousers. Engraving stainless steel is also possible with the laser set to full power and the movement of the axis set to low speed. This is demonstrated here on a sheet of stainless steel from the sample pack. The engraving does not go very deep into the material, but you can feel the groove left behind and, most important, it is clearly recognizable. Marking your workpiece or stainless steel cutlery is possible. The Alfero Laser 2 is a flexible tool, you can find more examples of what else can be done with such a machine on my website. 
There you can also find high resolution photos of the examples made in this video so that you can get your own impression of the capabilities this machine offers. Since laser engravers are only moved over two axes, creating templates is very easy. Photos or vector graphics are sufficient and no gigabyte software suite is required to process the data. Thanks to the open source firmware on the Alfero Laser 2, a simple Python script can convert the data into machine commands and send them to the laser cutter. You can find more about this on my website, have a click. An early version of the Python script is available for download there. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.